What is going on guys? My name is Senna and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about one common mistake for every agent in Valorant. These are going to be mistakes that I see people frequently make on these agents. And as the Valorant roster starts to grow and this roster starts getting more stacked, these mistakes just become more and more common. Now you can skip around through the video and find your main agents, but I would actually advise you to watch the whole video from start to finish so you don't miss out on any of this important information that'll definitely help you improve and rank up in Valorant. Right before we jump into the video though guys, I want to take a moment to introduce you and thank Valorant Tracker for sponsoring this video. Valorant Tracker is the best tool out there for tracking your stats and improvement. You can see a detailed breakdown of all your different statistics such as KD ratios, map win rates, agent win rates, headshot percentages, and so much more. One of the coolest features that Valorant Tracker offers is the Guide tab, where you can sift through a massive video library of lineups and strategies for every agent on every map. You'd expect that for a tool like this, you'd have to pay some sort of monthly subscription or that it would be very expensive, but Valorant Tracker is actually 100% free to download and use. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or pinned comment to download Valorant Tracker today. Huge, huge thank you to Valorant Tracker for sponsoring this video. And with all of that being said, guys, let's jump right into the video. I'm gonna be going down the list of agents in alphabetical order and giving you guys one common mistake mistake that I see and how you can go about fixing it. Starting off this list, we have Astra, and the most common mistake that I see Astra players make is not keeping one star in their pocket and using all of their stars in the pre-round. I see so many Astra players place down all four of their stars during the buy phase and have none extra in their pocket. There will be situations that show up mid-round where you wish that you would have had a star. For example, if someone is stuck in a corner or if the enemies are pushing something that you didn't star. If you need to smoke yourself off to get out of a sticky situation, there's just so many instances where having an extra star in your pocket mid-round will be super beneficial. I'd recommend putting down two stars for smokes and then maybe one for a suck or a stun and keeping one in your pocket just in case you might need it. Astra stars are super strong, so make sure you keep one in your pocket for a sticky situation or if you see an opportunity to capitalize off of it. Next up on the list, we have Breach. And the biggest common mistake that I see with Breach players is poor ability timing. Timing your abilities with Breach is incredibly important because you're usually stunning and flashing for a teammate. You want to stun the enemies so that your jet can dash on them or flash for your team so you can execute the site. If you're stunning way too early, the enemy is going to be unstunned by the time your teammate takes a fight. And if you flash too late, you're going to be flashing your entire team and just green everybody. It's very important to understand ability timing with Breach since you're setting up your team. I see so many inexperienced Breach players just throwing all of their utility out way before the team is ready to go out on site. This poor ability timing will lead to bad site executes and lost rounds, which we definitely don't want. Get comfortable using his abilities and timing them properly to coordinate with your team and you will be such a good Breach player, I promise you. Next up on the list, we we have Brimstone, and the biggest mistake that I see Brimstone players make is neglecting using his molly. To the experienced Brim mains watching this video, you know how overpowered Brimstone's molly is. I'd argue that it's the best molly in the game and lasts such a long time while doing an insane amount of damage. When the enemies are pushing into sight, use it to stall time and damage them while they're running in. If you're in post plant, make sure to shoot it at the bomb to stall time. Just make sure that you aren't neglecting this molly because it is honestly one of the best abilities in Valorant and you definitely don't want to sleep on it. I see so many new Brimstone players die with the molly still in their pocket when they could have used it to stall, deal damage, or buy time for their team. Brim is a very, very strong agent and his molly is absolutely amazing so make sure that you're using it every round that you get the chance to. Moving on to the next agent on the list, we have Cypher. And the biggest mistake that I see with Cypher players is having poor camera placement. Cypher's camera is incredible, just with the sheer amount of information it can give you, but all of that gets thrown away when you put it in a bad spot. 
You want to have a good balance of putting it in a spot where the enemies can't easily destroy it, but you can also get a lot of information out of it. If you're playing Ascent, for example, putting it on top of B main above the arches is such a good spot because the enemies can't destroy it until they're already out on site, and you can get a bunch of information on where they are when they're flooding out. So many new Cypher players just throw their camera wherever, and it's such a bad spot that gives them hardly any information, and the enemies end up instantly breaking it anyways. Another pro tip is to use it in post plant once you get the bomb down. You can use the camera to check to see if they're sticking it or if it's just a tap and save yourself the chance of getting headshotted when you jiggle out to check. It also forces them to break it and then take the dart out of them if you tag them with it and you can really play around with the enemy in post plant with this camera. Overall, Cypher's camera is one of the best abilities in his kit so you really don't want to waste it by putting it in bad positions. Next up on the list, we we have chamber and the most common mistake for chamber players is not using verticality to your advantage. If you guys didn't already know, chambers TP has no vertical restriction at all. This means that you can put it on top of a box and then TP on top of the box and then take the TP and put it down somewhere else safe that you can TP out of. This gives you a huge edge in a fight and gives you that early round advantage with good positioning. A lot of chambers just swing common angles with their TP and it's really a waste of the versatility that you can do with it. Especially if you're opping, just standing on top of a box or some sort of elevated surface where the enemy has to flick to you or doesn't expect you to be at is very, very strong, and I don't see enough chamber players abusing this mechanic. Next up on the list, we have Deadlock, and the biggest mistake that I see Deadlock players make is picking her in Agent Select. <laughs> All jokes aside though, Deadlock is one of the weaker agents in Valorant, but the biggest mistake that I see people picking her do is have poor sound sensor placement. You definitely do not want to use these sound sensors to watch flank, and you actually want to put them in high traffic areas where enemies are going to be flooding out and taking a fight. For example, if you're playing post plant on B on ascent, I would put one sound sensor for lane and then put one sound sensor for stairs. This makes it so that once they are exposed and peeking out in the open taking a fight, the sound sensor will trigger, so they either have to flick to it and break it, giving you an opportunity to shoot back, or they would just have to tank the stun, which is a free kill either way. You really want to think about where the enemies are going to be positioned when they're fighting you, and put your sound sensors there, and preferably out of the way so that they have to flick to shoot it, and it's not right in their face, which is easy to destroy. Next up on the list, we have Fade, and the biggest mistake that I see Fade players make is throwing easy to destroy haunts. Fade's Haunt is her signature scanning ability, and this could either be one of the best abilities in the game, or one of the worst abilities in the game, depending on how you use it. So many new Fade players will just throw the Haunt back sight willy-nilly and just hope that it'll just scan people. Fade's Haunt is incredibly easy to destroy if you see it coming, and just throwing it on sight hardly ever works. I would highly advise you to learn some easy lineups to throw it on top of buildings so it'll scan everybody down below. A fade main that knows lineups is incredibly deadly, and I hardly ever do any lineups, but fade is the one agent that I actually wanted to get some haunt lineups for because you can scan the entire bomb site. It's actually kind of insane. Stop throwing your haunt back site and instead throw it on top of buildings and areas that the enemies will not be able to see very easily. This will grant you so much free information and free kills, and trust me, once you get good at this, you will become a 10 times better fade player. Next up on the list, we have Gecko, and the biggest mistake that I see Gecko players make is throwing their Dizzy way too low. If you guys didn't already know, Dizzy just recently got buffed, which is his main signature flashing ability, and basically makes it harder to break because it shoots you faster with the flash. If you throw the Dizzy right next to you, and it's way too low, the enemy will be able to shoot it and break it and then flick to you really fast and easy. Throw your Dizzy high up in the sky so the enemies have to flick up to break it and then all the way back down to you. Throwing off the enemy's crosshair placement with this ability is super strong and I would highly recommend every Gecko player to start throwing their Dizzies high up. This is especially good if you're hiding behind a box and you throw it straight up in the air and then swing out with it because you're basically guaranteed that kill. Especially with the recent buff to Dizzy, this is definitely a tip that I would highly suggest every Gecko player to implement into their playstyle. Moving on, next up on the list, we have Harbor. And the biggest mistake that Harbor players make is not effectively using
using his cove to reposition. Harbor's cove is insanely versatile. You can use it to throw it on your teammate when they're planting, which I would say is the most common use of it, but a less common use that I'd recommend that you guys start doing is using the cove to reposition yourself. This could be for retaking a site, like getting out of heaven on ascent, for example, or when you're executing a site to rush out without getting shot and open more angles on the enemies. Just using this cove to grant yourself space and more leverage to work with to take space is incredibly powerful and a lot of harbor players neglect this aspect of this ability. You can really catch people off guard and they won't expect you to swing that fast because of that confidence that you have that you can't get shot through your bubble. Definitely don't sleep on this ability and there's a lot you can do with it so make sure that you harbor players learn how to use this cove to your advantage. Next up on the list we have ISO and the biggest mistake that I see ISO players make is actually buying a ghost on pistol round. This isn't necessarily as much of a mistake as it is just not being optimal. With ISO on pistol round, you could actually buy light shield and two vulnerables. This is insanely strong because with a classic, if the enemy is vulnerable, you can kill them in two shots. This is the exact same as the ghost and the right click makes it so that you can mow enemies down with this. What you can do is wait for the enemies to get ready to execute, then throw that vulnerable at them and then swing out and just right click the group of them and you're guaranteed free kills doing this. Not only this, but you also have armor. So if you get dinked, you're safe and you can fall back. This is a pretty overpowered ISO strap that I don't see a lot of people use because every ISO video I see on YouTube, they're always buying a ghost on pistol round, which in my opinion, is a huge waste. Buying light armor and two vulnerables with a classic will guarantee you free pistol round kills, so don't sleep on this for you ISO players. Moving on from this, the next agent on the list is Jet. And the biggest common mistake that I see Jet players make is not clearing angles for their team while they're entering. If you guys didn't already know, while you're dashing out, you could actually look left and right to clear the close angles for your team. Even if you don't see them with your own eyes, they'll pop up on the minimap for your team to kill them, and this is something that a lot of jet players neglect doing. A lot of jet players will just dash into their smoke while looking straight and not checking left and right for their team. I saw Tens talking about this in a video, and it's so true because it's so strong to do this. Remember that information is key in Valorant, and being able to clear out all of those angles without having to waste utility is very, very strong, and your team will definitely capitalize off of that information. There's nothing worse than dashing out on site and having your whole team mowed out by someone who is just camping in the cubby that you could have checked while you were dashing. You can practice doing this in a custom game just to get used to checking your corners while you're dashing, but once you get used to it, this is such a underrated tip. Moving on from this, let's talk about the next agent on the list, which is KO. And the most common mistake that I see KO players make is not using left click flashes. New KO players absolutely love using the right click flash because it's so easy to use to pop out of a smoke with. It pops insanely fast and it's much easier to control than the left click so it seems like it's the best flash to use. Well, actually, this flash got nerfed and the right click flash does not flash you for as long as it used to. The left click flashes will flash you for much longer and you could actually flash for your team much easier this way. Once you start getting used to throwing these left click flashes, you can make a lot of crazy plays like banking it off of a wall to perfectly flash the enemy and like I said, they'll be flashed for so much longer giving you even more free kills. Not to mention that the right click flashes are pretty predictable and people are used to that by now. If you want to level up your KO game, I would highly suggest getting used to those left click flashes because they can be insanely deadly once you learn how to use them properly. Next up on the list, we have Killjoy. And the biggest mistake that you Killjoy players make out there is doing the exact same setup every single round. Now don't get me wrong, using that perfect Killjoy setup that just microwaves the enemy team is great, but once they fall for it once, it'll be very difficult to capitalize off of it again. Killjoy utility is very strong, but when it's unpredictable. If the enemies have already fallen into your setup once and they know where everything is, it's gonna lose a lot of that value that it initially had because of that surprise factor when they ran into it. Make sure that from round to round, you're switching up your setup and changing it up a bit so the enemies never know what to expect for your setup. Slightly switching up your turret placement, putting your alarm bot in different places like mid or on a different choke point and setting up your mollies in different areas will always keep your enemies guessing where 
where you are. Also, switching sites can be really good too. For example, switching to A if you've been playing B a lot or vice versa. Just getting creative and not staying stagnant with your Killjoy setups will definitely help you become a much more annoying Killjoy player to go up against. I used to have the problem where I kept doing the same setup every round, and once the enemies become hip to it, it's pretty much useless and pretty easy to avoid. Moving on from this, let's talk about the next agent on this list, which is Neon. And the biggest mistake that I see you Neon mains make is throwing your wall out in the open in the middle of the site. Throwing your wall down the middle of the site like this is incredibly grief because the enemies can play around either side and they actually have more room to work with and can catch unsuspecting angles and it's really hard to clear the close corners like this. Instead of throwing this wall out in the open straight down the middle, instead angle it to either the far left or far right of the choke point so that you can isolate your fights on either side. This will make it so the enemies have to swing through two layers of the wall and makes it much harder to help fight on site with their teammates. Using Neon's wall as a sort of viper wall almost to block off a couple choke points on one side of the site is so much better than just throwing it down the middle and potentially throwing the round for your team. I don't see enough Neon players doing this, so if you want to improve at Neon, please start throwing your walls to block off one side. Don't just throw it out in the open because you will definitely screw your team over. Next up on the list, we have Omen. And the most common mistake that Omen players make is not using your flash on the site execute. Omen has one of the best flashes in the game and using it when you're executing a site is one of the best uses of it. Being able to flash like half the site with one ability is so strong and a lot of Omen players neglect doing this and actually just save it. Not using this ability in such a crucial part of the round can definitely be harmful for your team. Get comfortable using this flash to help your team clear out sight. And I've been really starting to do this a lot more with Omen and I found it so much easier to take sights. Omen has one of the strongest flashes in the game. So definitely do not sleep on this for sight executes because it does go very far. Next up on the list, we have Phoenix. And the biggest mistake that I see Phoenix players make is not farming ult orbs. Phoenix has the best ult orb to ult value ratio as it only costs six orbs and is basically a free extra life to entry with. Since the orb cost is so cheap, it is absolutely crucial that you farm at least one orb at the start of every single round. This will make you get your ult so much sooner and can help you win so many more rounds just off of that one ult alone. Whenever I'm playing Phoenix, I'm always hogging the ult orbs and will actually go out of my way to farm them at the beginning of the round to make sure that I get that ult as much as I can. If you are considering picking up Phoenix, make sure that you always farm up those ult orbs because it is insanely crucial for getting that ult as much as possible and winning those free rounds with it. Next up on the list, we have Raze. And the biggest common mistake that I see Raze players make is not being creative with their satchels. Now, don't get me wrong, double satcheling onto site definitely works, but this is not the only way that you can use these satchels. For instance, you can use it to give yourself a speed boost for a wide peak when you're satchel peaking. This is where you throw the satchel on the wall and use it to propel you out, catching any enemy holding you off guard. You can also use it to get enemies off the bomb. For example, if they tap the bomb, you can throw a satchel at it, and when it pops, it'll knock them off the bomb, basically guaranteeing them to have to tap it again. If someone's trying to peek you, you can throw the satchel at them to push them back a bit. You can just do so much with these satchels and you don't have to only use them to double satchel and you can get really creative with them. Really good raise mains know this and always use satchels in different creative ways to give themselves different advantages and to stay unpredictable in every fight. Next up on the list, we have Reyna. And the biggest mistake that new Reyna players make is not abusing off angles. Reyna is the queen of off angles, and if you don't know what an off angle is, it's basically positioning yourself out in the open in a very unfavorable position. You can get away with this as Reyna, because if you get the kill, you can just E out, dismiss out, and boom, you're gone. This makes it incredibly easy to fight multiple enemies at the same time and makes you be able to go for a lot more aggressive and risky plays that you wouldn't normally be able to do with another agent. I see so many Reyna players just holding the most common angles and getting pre-fired when they have the best ability for literally catching enemies off guard, which they're not abusing. Reyna can have an incredibly hyper-aggressive and unpredictable playstyle with her positioning specifically, so make sure that you are always positioning yourself on off angles and using different peaks to catch 
catch your enemies off guard because you can get away with it. Next up on the list, we have Sage. And a big mistake that a lot of Sage players make is using both slow orbs at the same time. I see new players playing Sage trying to hold off a push and they throw both of their slow orbs at the same time at the same choke point. This is so bad because you're wasting precious utility that you could be using to stall the enemies for much longer. Make sure that after you use a slow orb, you wait all the way until the slow orb is gone and maybe even a little bit after so that the enemies are still scared to push in before throwing that second slow orb and you could stall for double the time. I especially see this a lot in mid on split where people will just hide behind their wall and chuck both slow orbs out and this is such a waste of your abilities. Make sure you're spacing these orbs out a bit to buy your team even more time and stall their push, making it a much more likely situation for you to be able to win. Next up on the list, we have Sky. And the most common mistake that I see a lot of Sky players make is not buying your heal on pistol round. Pistol round is a round where chip damage is incredibly crucial and getting more chip damage will have much more impact on pistol than any other round. Having a Sky on your team who has heal completely negates basically all of that chip damage and makes it so that everybody can be max HP. Sky heal on pistol might genuinely be the best ability in the game and I don't see enough Sky players doing this. I understand that for attack, you probably want a dog instead of a heal, but actually, I honestly just go for full utility and sacrifice the shield and gun just to get the heal and dog because Sky's kit is insanely strong even after the dog nerf. If you want to up your Sky game, make sure that you're always buying that heal on pistol round because the impact it has is absolutely incredible, trust me. Moving on from this, next up on the list, we have Sova. And the most common mistake that you Sova players make is using your recon dart way too early in the round. I'm more talking about defense here, but at the very start of the round, so many Sovas on defense will instantly throw their recon dart in main. This is a waste because you're gaining information that you would have already had anyways. Instead of instantly shooting this recon dart, wait a few seconds. Wait a little bit and see if the enemies make noise or presence on their own instead of just instantly throwing it. If they do make noise and they are rushing the site, then you can save that dart to shoot it on the wall behind them as they're all flooding out and scan all of them and basically sabotage their entire rush. Trust me, there's nothing more annoying than when that Sova dart comes through at the same time that you're executing sight and the dart is in sight so someone has to turn around and break it. This gives away everybody's position and makes it so much harder to take sight. So you Sova players really need to start abusing this and stop just instantly shooting the dart when you're getting information that you would have already gotten anyways. I used to have this bad habit a lot and I would instantly waste my dart at the start of the round. But now that I'm thinking more methodically about my utility and saving it as much as I can, I'm getting much more value out of it. Next up on the list, we have Viper. And the biggest mistake that new Viper players make is not comboing your smoke orb with the molly. Viper's molly is incredibly strong because it vulnerables you, meaning you take double damage. So if you pair this molly with the smoke orb that decays you, you can shred enemies that are running through it. I see a lot of Viper players throw their wall up, throw their orb up somewhere else, and then they'll use their mollies in random situations that doesn't make sense. Pairing that smoke orb with your molly is one of the best uses for Viper's kit, and a lot of new Viper players need to learn to do this if they seriously want to improve at Viper. Lineups with Viper are incredibly strong as well, since you can pair that smoke orb on the bomb with the molly to instantly kill anybody that taps the bomb. All around, the smoke orb and molly combo is deadly, so make sure that you're pairing these two pieces of utility together when you're playing Viper. And finally, last but not least, we have Yoru. And the biggest mistake that I see you Yoru players make is throwing easy to dodge flashes. Yoru's flash is very interesting and unique since you could actually bank it off of walls to get angles that you normally couldn't with the flash. So many Yoru players just throw the flash in such easy to dodge spots out in the open. I'd recommend banking it off of something to make it so that the flash pops as soon as it gets revealed, making it very, very difficult to dodge. If you're inside of a smoke, you can look down and bank the flash off of the floor and it'll go straight up, which will be very hard to dodge for an enemy holding the smoke. Just getting creative with these flashes and not throwing super predictable and easy to dodge flashes will make you a much better Yoru player, especially if you combo it with his clone and TP. 
And there you guys have it. There is one common mistake for every single agent in Valorant. Let me know down in the comment section below what your main agent is in Valorant and the next agent that you want to learn. This is a video that I've wanted to do for a very long time, so I'm happy to finally be getting this video out for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful, and I hope that you guys enjoy these more longer style videos. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down in the comment section below. I also want to thank you guys so much for 150,000 subscribers. You guys are absolutely insane, and I never thought that we'd come this far. Whether you were here back when I made my first video, or you're here just so subscribing today. Thank you so much for the support. You guys are incredible and have changed my life forever. I love you guys and I wish that I can thank each and every one of you individually for how much you've done for me. I have a Discord server linked down in the description below. We have a super chill community. You should join up. We'd love to have you. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day or night to watch this video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.